Rei Anochi Nosi Lefnechem Hayom Brocho Kloloch. You should understand. I'm presenting before you today Brocho Kloloch. What is a, a blessing and what is a curse? It's a brocha. What is the brocha? Ashetishmo mitzvah Hashem lokechem. Ashenochi mitzvah eschem yom. What is the blessing? The blessing is to listen to the commandments of Hashem, which I am commanding to today. Meaning, if you want to know what blessing is, a person f- says, I feel blessed. Why? So they say, why are you blessed? Because I put on tefillin every day. I wear tzitzis. I see bircha samozon. I eat matzah to seder. I observe Shabbos. I am blessed. But why is that the blessing? Do you know why? Because you're listening to the commandments of Hashem. That is the blessing. What is the curse? Haklolo. When you don't heed the commandments of Hashem, and you deviate from the path which I am commanding you today, to go after strange, alien gods, which you don't know. So what is the brocha to do the will of God? That is the brocha. What about you You have failing health? Financially, you're impoverished. That's not the kolola. That's not the curse. The curse is if you deviate from the path which Hashem commands you to go after idolatry, that's the ultimate level of kolola. That's a detachment from God. You know, you have a person who has everything in the world but he has emphysema, he can barely breathe, his kidneys are not functioning. And, but he has everything. Financially, he has everything. He has good looks, has a fine family, but he personally is dying. What is the essence of a person? What is the objective why a person exists? Why did God put man on earth? For a purpose, for an objective. So if you address that objective, which is doing the mitzvos, heeding the mitzvos of Hashem, to walk the proper path, then you're blessed. That means every moment of your existence has value. And what is the value of your value? Eternity. To have a relation with God, which is perfect in the absolute sense. And if not, what have you done? You've detached yourself and you're Investment of life is totally, not only futile and wasted, but it's going to have very severe consequences. You've cut yourself off from the source of life and you have no relevance to eternity. So in, the, in, in a nutshell, blessing is when you do the right thing and the right thing is which makes you worthy to have the relationship with Hashem and the curse is when you've cut yourself off from the ultimate, which is God himself which is to go after idolatry. I saw over Shabbos, there's a Balaturim in last week's Parsha, where the Torah juxtaposes idolatry to the performance of mitzvos. The Torah tells us, regarding idolatry, you must dest- when you come into the land of Canaan, you must destroy it, destroy their altars, their locations of idolatry, cut down their trees of idolatry, you must abominate it. You must detest it because it's cherem. Cherem is means it's like it's off limits. It's excommunicated. That's what it is. And then the Torah says you must observe the mitzvos. So Rashi cites Chazal that if a person does idolatry, it's as if he rejects the Torah in entirety. And that the Gemara says, if you, a person is an Ovid Avodah a person worships idolatry, it's il kofir b'chol Torah kula. You're denying or rejecting the Torah's entirety. 
So the Baal Turm says the word cherem. Cherem. Shaki shaktsenu ki cherem hu. So the Baal Turm says the word cherem is numerically ramach. Not only is numerically ramach, cherem and ramach are the same letters. You just rearrange the letters. Meaning that if a person does idolatry, the curse will come upon every aspect of your being. That's Ramach. What happens if you do tshuva? If you do tshuva, the letters cherem or rachem, same letters. Ramach, rachem are the same letters. Just rearrange the letters. So in terms of the most extreme negative consequence, it's cherem. And cherem means it will come upon every aspect of your being, which is Ramach. The 248 parts to a person's body. That's your totality. But if a person is tshuva, it's Rachem. Hashem will have Rachmanus, Hashem will have mercy, and you'll be reinstated even to a greater degree. That's Rachem. It's Ramach. Ramach Ivorim, 248 parts to the person's body. Right? Is there a meaning? Is it meaning? Ramach is, is a numerical value. Ram a Ramach. Right, we say Ramach Mitzvah Sase, the 248 positive commandments, which correspond to the 248 parts of the person's body, which is 248 parts. So it's Cherem means destruction, and it's the destruction is expressed in the word Cherem because it will come upon every aspect of your being, which is Ramach, which is 248. And if you do Tshuva, which are the same letters, which are Rach, Hashem will be Rachem. He will take the Cherem and turn it into Rachem, and he will have Rachmanus, who will have mercy upon every aspect of your being to be fully reinstated. That's the Balaturim. So what's Klola? Klola is Cherem. That's Cherem. What's Brocha? Brocha is Rachem. That's when you do the will of Hashem. So it's interesting. I once mentioned the Ramban, whenever there's a conflict between an Asei and Los Asei, the classical case, which we draw to the whole Torah's entirety, the Torah says the Jew is not permitted to wear shatnis, combination of wool of linen. But the Torah says, Gedilim tasiloch, if you have a four-cornered garment, you must put tzitzis on the four cor cor corners of that garment. And it says, Tzenu pishtam yachtov. You're not permitted to wear wool and linen together because it's shatnis. Why does the Torah juxtapose the midst of tzitzis to the negative commandment of wearing shabbat is to tell us that if you have a garment which is made of linen, which is four corners, you're required to put scissors. You put scissors in those four corners, but what about your violation? You've created a combination of linen. The answer is whenever you have the conflict between a positive and negative commandment, the positive commandment supersedes the negative commandment. That's that's the source of our say dochalosa say that a positive commandment overrides a negative commandment, it supersedes negative commandment. So the Ramban explains what exactly is the rationale. So he explains, what is a losase? When we say, you tell a person not to do something and you accept that dictate. A losase is a refrain. You refrain, you don't. Why is a person refrain? That's called Yiras Hashem. You're framed because it's Yira, that's fear, reverence. When you tell somebody to do something, what motivates a person to do? That's Avas Hashem. This is the Rambam. Avas Hashem is Asei. If you have Ava, you do. If the person does not have Ava, but you have fear, then you don't cross those lines. So if you have Ava pitted against Yira, since Ava is greater than Yira, therefore Ava supersedes the Yira. That's the Rambam. That's the rationale in the background, in the understanding why a positive commandment supersedes a negative commandment. That's the Rambam. Some say, what is Ava? Why is the Midas Rachmim? Rachmim is Ava. If a person does idolatry, it's Cherim. And Cherem are the letters of what? Of Ramach. What happens if you do Tshuva? Then it's Rachem. 
Then Hashem has rachmim. Then God has mercy. Why does God have mercy? Because God has love for the person that he wants the person to recover. And the person is reinstated. So we're talking about two op opposite ends of the spectrum. And that's what we read in last week's Parsha. We're God's children. But as a father disciplines a child, and when he disciplines the child, it's not to hurt the child, but it's only to alert the child that he's doing the wrong thing or to rehabilitate the child. Identically, when Shem punishes us, it's liasreko, it's the same thing, it's the same love. So punishment is also is God's love for us. So punishment is Avas Hashem. So when a person does tshuva, and it's rachem, it's definitely Avas Hashem. He allows you to be reinstated and to be reconnected. So therefore the Torah tells us, I'm presenting, Moshe says, I'm presenting for you today, brochu klolo. What is brocha? Brocha is listening to the word of Hashem, heeding his word. We're not even talking about reward. What is klola, a curse? Imlosishmu. If you don't listen to the word of Hashem, that's the detachment. Rabbi Ray and Yira are the same word, right? Same root word? Yes, 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 yes. We'll, we'll talk about that in one moment. You know, the Gemara tells us that if witnesses who are qualified to testify, testify in court, that's considered credible evidence. Witnesses who are qualified to testify. Now the question is, and the judges rule on that evidence, although the judges don't know, they don't know the fact, it's all based on, the Torah says you have a right to believe what the witnesses say after you interrogate them, it becomes credible evidence and you have a right to believe them. What about if the judges, they themselves witnessed the crime? They witnessed whether it's capital punishment punishment, or it's whatever it may be. The Gemara tells us there's no need for witnesses. Why? It's, it's, a, it's a logical concept. Lote shmi agdola miria. Listening can't have any greater credibility than seeing it firsthand. If the w judges don't actually witness the fact of what's being presented before them, and the Torah says, listening to evidence is credible, so if you actually see it yourself, there's no question that's credible. Lote Shmiya Gdola Maria. Hearing cannot be better, have greater veracity than seeing itself. Ray is fact. We say seeing is believing. And I always say this multiple times. Ezul Chokham Haros Anolat. A Chokham is not Maven as Anolat. A wise person, it's not he understands. And understanding is abstract. Rio is fact. You know, you have a well-weathered businessman who's been through the thick and thin of, of business. It's not he understands. He's been through it. He knows what, what, what immediately. He senses what it is, although his son doesn't understand what it is. Because he has a sense. That sense, it's like seeing is a sense, experience is a sense. Or chokma gives you that sense. That's Ezo chokma haros and all that. Moshe Rabbeinu is saying, I'm presenting you with absolute clarity. The blessing and the curse. Blessing is if you attach yourself to Hashem. If you heed His word, you follow His commandments. If not, it's the curse. You're being actually severing that level of relationship. That, that's, that's the curse. Now, we mentioned Rav Chaim Voloshana writes in Nefshe Chaim, how do you refer to as the fear of God? Fear of God is Yira Shamayim. Right? That's what it's called. Yira Shamayim. Fear of heaven. Why fear of heaven? Because if a person understands the ramifications of his behavior and what God does in heaven, how he responds, whether he withdraws or he becomes more involved, then the person will actually, if you see that, then you have reverence or then you have fear. If you don't understand what's going on in heaven, and that's the thing, you know, famous words from the Chofetz Chaim, the Chofetz Chaim writes that as you, society, humanity's belief in God becomes weaker, 
Hashem allows certain technologies to come into being. For instance, people used to say, if I speak Loshon Hora, if I do things, or I say things, God's in heaven, I'm here. Could he hear what's going on? So what does Hashem do? And this is the famous story with the Chavetz Chaim. And whenever a new technology would come out, they would bring it to Chavetz Chaim. They say, so what does the great Torah mind say about this? She says, I see from the telephone what you see, say here, you're able to hear long distance. That's what the Chavetz Chaim said when he, when he they explained to him what the telephone was initially. So he, he goes to explain. So if a human being is able to hear long distance, God to create himself, he's not aware of what you're saying. And as one's belief, society belief, weaken and weaken, and start fading, there are always new technologies. There's a din v'cheshbon. But how can it be a din v'cheshbon? You have a recorder. You have a picture. Picture of actually the crime. One's life is more than, it's, there's a replay. Lachem Eiv, 120 years, when it comes to present the evidence, there's a full replay of every aspect of your life. So you can't deny that you did something that you violated and it cannot be denied that you did the mitzvah, everything. So as society becomes more questioning and doubtful about the reality of God's knowing, these technologies develop to say it's fact because if the human is able to re replicate and preserve it forever for posterity, God definitely has that ability. That's the idea. That's Re'ina, we're putting before you, Re'e, you should understand this. Bracha Klola, Bracha is that, Klola is the detachment. 